So today morning, I'll tell you about guide wires. Sir. Now the most common guide wire that we start a procedure with is the J guide wire. Now this is basically used only to initiate a procedure, and it has got some very very other uses which I have uh, minimal uses which I will tell you soon. So the J wire, as you can see, we call it J because it's got a J tip on it. it's got a green color because it's got a teflon coating on it now if you look at this wire it's reasonably soft you can see you can make out by the way it folds huh? and the teflon basically is put so that it will prevent uh, clots forming or makes it less thrombogenic now when you do a needle puncture you have to insert this wire and for that reason they give you this little uh what you call introducer which is basically preloaded and comes to you so basically it will be loaded from the back side here and you'll have it this way huh? so as soon as you puncture the needle you would straighten this connect it to the hub of the needle and you push it forward as it goes into the blood vessel because of the j tip it is not subintimal that's the main idea and you just push it up now the problem with this wire is what it can go up but there's no torque see as i am rotating can you see i'm togging it here there's no torque at all so it has no use in terms of togability but even then sometimes we can use it when we go inside selective vessels to avoid branches for example you can go down the sfa with the j wire with the tip properly formed because it can't enter a branch and you can access it easily now when i show you this wire i just want to talk about how a wire is constructed and why do wires have different properties so i talked to you about and said the coating of a wire so every wire will have a core and a coating so let us cut this wire we are using this cutting plier and we are going to cut the wire somewhere here okay and then we are going to cut the wire somewhere here slightly to understand how it feels okay so i strip the wire out i'm pulling this outer thing you know can you see how easily it comes out now because it comes out easily it means it is not fused to the wire it's very easy to understand that right because it's not fused to the wire when i talk the wire the outer covering will rotate you understand and because the outer covering is rotating it has no torque understand the advantage is it is safe the disadvantage it has no torque so it's not a very great wire to be used yeah? now see have a look at this it's so simple easy now this one is basically made either out of copper or aluminum and you can see it can you see that this is like a spring that has been wound and this has got a teflon coating on it you get this point i hope you understand this this is a teflon coating no long back before we were uh, actually having coils available in the market we used to use this outer covering to make coils and i'll show that also to you a little later but uh, just to make you understand that if you pass this rapidly over uh, the mantle of a wire you can make uh, a coil so now i take out so the center can you see has got two pieces this again is not fused because it's not fused again it won't give any togability now what is the use of this this goes to the distal part so this will be longer in the central core so when you go distally what's going to happen this will make the tip soft this part is the main core of the guide wire this is what gives the wire stiffness Now it's very easy to understand when i want an extra stiff wire this wire is going to be much more stiffer than what it is here if i want a very soft wire i'm going to make this soft so the central is basically made of stainless steel this is also stainless steel in a j tape 50 wire i'll talk about later about different 
mandrels that come. Also, this tip can be made out of a material which can be, suppose, gold in the tip, so it can make it very radio opaque. So, this is not a very radio opaque wire. It has basically got some braiding which is radio opaque. And of course, like I said, the property of it which basically allows you to make it safe. So, like I said, it's not a very great wire for any other use. Though it's not part of today's talk, but because we're using the wire, I'll also tell you how we used to use this wire to make coils. So, so let me just show you how it's done. So you basically need a length of wire, which is a bit short, and you just load it inside this mandrel. So be careful because you can end up in injuring your finger because these tend to be very, very sharp. Okay, I'm inserting this back. Okay, now if I give a very tight angle to this, so this angle should be technically very sharp. If it is sharp, you will get a coil. Huh? And if you push it, okay, it's not coming. Well, the technique is this. Actually, I'm a bit worried because once I injured my hand badly when I was pushing it on this corner. But uh, if you can give a better and a sharper angle to this, you will get a coil. Coil move. See, the flyer is also gone. This is meant for cutting nails. See if I can get it this way. Still not coming. So basically, this is the technique. It is about not coming because uh, it is not really a good angle. So it's basically made like an angle like this. You keep it like this and give a... And can you see the curve that forms? Okay. So you can make a... So this is how we used to make coils long back. So one way is to make it a coil like this. Okay. You technically... Uh, take it out. I mean, technically you can take it out of this. Rather than using a hand. And then you snip it out. Uh, I think we should get a better plier. You know, this plier was actually not for cutting wires. It's basically a nail cutting plier. You know? Okay. And then we cut this into a straight kind of thing. We load it back on this. Um, it's always good to use some safety gloves when you do this, but we don't use it anymore because we get uh, coils freely. Okay, just to make you understand, you load it back. Now we have this here. I mean, technically, this should be also cut to make it a pusher. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, if I'm now just imagine, suppose you're inside the blood vessel, you put it inside the catheter. Use this as a pusher and the coil will come out. You understand? So we push this inside the body like this. And once, you know, using this, you push it out, the straight part. And a coil will be inside the catheter. And then you push it to the guide wire. So even today, the basic concept of the coil is exactly the same. You understand? It's exactly the same concept. It goes into the catheter, you straighten it and you push it with a guide wire. You understood, right? It's not very difficult to understand. So, but the problems are this. We can't make precision coils. We cannot be sure the exact size of the coils. On top of that, when we were putting Dacron meshes, in it, we found it difficult to push it. But even today, remember, if you've got a large aneurysm, you want to fill it with space, you can still use this. You can take a whole length of guide wire, make in your coil and push it outside. Okay? So, you got to understand about this. 
the central mantle, which is made of stainless steel, the outer covering, which is basically a copper or a aluminium bound, but it's got a Teflon coating. It's got a J tip. It has no toggability character. We got a second mantle, which is thinner, which goes distally. So based on this, we got several varieties of wires. Okay. Now, this wires traditionally come in a length of 150 centimeters. So, why do they make it 150 centimeters? Because most of our catheters are 100 centimeters. So, we got half a centimeter, uh, half of uh, I mean another 50 centimeters of length extra so that we can push the wire beyond the catheter. But suppose you want to do a procedure where you want to keep the wire inside, take out the catheter, and then put the catheter over the wire, we need to double the length. So for the double length, we have catheter wires which are called exchange wires, and they will be 280 centimeters. Okay, 280 centimeters. Now this exchange length is directly dependent on the catheter that you are using. Now, for example, if I'm working inside the brain, and there if I'm going to use a micro catheter and an exchange wire, should be double that length. So you would ideally require 320, 330 because that is 150 centimeters over. So understand, exchange length has to be more than double the length of the catheter that I use. Can you get it? Now, for example, if I'm going to work in the viscera, I can use a 60 centimeters catheter like a Cobra. Then I can sometimes even manage with a 180 centimeter catheter. You get it? So remember, exchange length is not a fixed length. It would depend a lot upon the length of the catheter I'm using, okay? So this is how it's constructed, right, this one. Now, so it's very easy to understand the difference between different wires. Now, for example, the next wire that I want to show you is a wire which is called the Rosen wire. It looks like a J wire, but the only difference is it is a stiffer wire. You can feel the stiffness. How do you know? And I try to rotate it. I find that it is, you know, it comes out. You can actually feel the stiffness. Now it's very easy to understand why it's stiff, right? Because you cut this, the mandrel inside is going to be a lot more stiffer. You understand why it is soft here? Because the second mandrel is coming here, which is soft. But, it's thick. but again, like the other wire, the problem is, these, though it's a uh, uh, wire that is stiff, and this is, can you see the length looking at it? Can you see the length? This is an exchange length wire, right? Can you see that? Because it's so much longer. It's very easy to see that. You can put it along with the other wire and it will be definitely reaching to close more than 200 centimeters to give that extra length. So we are talking about mostly they make it 280 or 240 centimeters. And if you see again, this won't torque. So I'm holding this here. I'm rotating this wire. There is not much of a torque. And when torque is not there, you'll find that it is not fused properly onto this. So all these green coated wires for some, generally are not torqueable wires. You can see that it cannot talk because it moves freely on it. And uh, it is not as bad as a J wire, but still it doesn't have the property. You can see this moving freely. I can just show that to you. If I, so what they have done over here is a very interesting concept. The distal part is actually a little flexible. The central part, from, you know, this is a band-like thing. I don't know if you can see. This is a part where it gets stiff. So whenever you have a stiff wire, you must decide how much is the floppy segment. For example, suppose I'm working on a, a renal artery and I'm wanting to put a stent graft. I want to use a Rosen wire. I cannot use a 6 centimeter floppy tip because the floppy partly outside the renal artery. You understand? Then I cannot get the advantage. So I'll rather use a two centimeter floppies. Can you see how this part is stiff here? You can make it out, right? This part is stiff here. This part is very soft. So now I've got the stiff part here and a soft part here. What's going to happen is I've got approximately just two centimeter that is soft. And I know this will work inside the renal artery. So rosin is very often used in the renal artery. So whatever extra stiff wire I use, the property, how stiff is it? And the second thing is, how much is a soft end? So the question goes, why do I need a stiff wire? The biggest advantage of a stiff wire is it will straighten the vessel. So it becomes easy for me to take a long sheath or a device. In a tortuous anatomy, nothing will you know, go. For example, when I do a crossover procedure in the uh, iliac artery, 
I would like to use an extra step because now that curve which is like this becomes like this. I got a tortuous iliac artery. I will cross with the catheter. Then I'll put an extra stiff wire. All the loops go up and then it becomes easier to take an extra stiff wire. So for example, this wire you see, it will take any curve I want. See, it is like this, right? The vessel is any curve. But here if I try to do the same thing, you find it is a lot more difficult because it's very stiff. See, it doesn't take those bends easily. It's a lot more stiffer. So it gives me a property. So the stiffness can get more and more stiff also depending on what is the device I'm going to use. For example, this is a wire which is called the Amplard Super Stiff Wire. This also comes in a straight or a curved tip. This is even more stiffer, you know, right? So this gives me even more support to go through a vessel. So we would commonly use it for any exchange maneuver across a tortuous anadol. Can you get it? So example, we are going to put a long sheet into the carotid artery. We'll enter into the external carotid, put this amplat extra strip, then take the sheath over it into the common carotid artery. Can you understand? Because as it takes this bend, from the aortic arch to the left carotid, it cannot go like this. It's very difficult. Whereas if I take a catheter, a wire which is basically like so soft, this bend no, can go to any bend. It will just go to like this. And the problem that happens with any bend is that things will not track up, but rather when you push it, the whole wire, the, cat, the guide wire itself will buckle like this and go. You understand? So that is why we don't want this buckling to take place. We rather use a stiff wire like this. Beyond this, Boston Scientific at one time used to make these super stiff wires. You can make out it's really stiff. You can even look at it. See the way it stands. It's an easy way to understand it, just the way it stands. It's really stiff. Can you understand? Look, something like the Amplats, uh, uh, the Amplats super stiff wire. This also is rigid. But you can make out at this point it starts bending. This point it starts bending. But if you take this by the side, you will see that at a much longer length, it won't bend. See, so understand. If you put them by the side, you can easily make out the difference. Can you understand what's happening? So this is just to know. And if I the side, if I put the regular j wire which I put before, it will blend even more. See this. You understanding this? No? It's a very easy way to understand stiffness. Huh? So the reason we use it is primarily to straighten a vessel, but also understand whenever I'm straightening a vessel, I'm putting a lot of shear onto the vessel. So do not use more than what is necessary. The most, the stiffest wire available in the market is called the Lundquist wire. It's here. Okay. This is the Lundquist wire, and you can see this. It goes up and up and is still straight. Can you see that? Just see, I brought it as high as possible. And you look at it, it doesn't bend at all. It's like a steel rod. And this is the wire that we use when we are taking stent grafts. It's only reserved for taking stent grafts primarily across the arch. Because we need something this stiff to take the support so it doesn't buckle. Because the device itself is very stiff. Have you understood, right? But remember when you're using a Lundquist wire like this, across the outer, especially in the region where there is an aortic rupture, it is dangerous. You have to be very careful when you're pushing and pulling in a dis disrupted outer because, like I said, this produces a lot of shear on the outic arch. So, the outic arch is like it's trying to push that outic arch open. Have we got it? So, the first thing about wires is is it a regular J wire? It's a medium stiffness wire. It is a super stiff wire or a wire like a Lundquist wire. To summarize, the J wire is basically the access wire I get for all points. If I want to do an exchange maneuver, I would use a wire like a Rosen's wire or I'd use a wire like the Amplard extra stiff wire. If I'm going to do an exchange maneuver where I'm going to track a stent graft for an outic repair, a dissection of the outer or uh, an outic aneurysm, I'll use the Lundquist wire. Have you got it? So I'm doing a carotid exchange. It's a amplus excessive. If I'm going to an exchange across the bifurcation, it's a amplus excessive. So the commonest wire that we will use for exchange maneuvers is the amplus excessive. You understand? And the Lundquist is only preserved and only kept exclusively for use in 
an aortic aneurysm. Okay, are you clear? I hope you understood this, right? So we talked about one property, and that is the stiffness of the wire. We also talked on the coating of the wire, which is made in these cases of Teflon. And we also talked that the core determines the property of the wire in terms of stiffness. But now we have to look, how do we get wires that torque very well? Now, because torqueability is a very important property to do superselective angiography. So the most popular toggable wire in the periphery is called the termo wire. Okay. Now we call it a glide wire or the termo wire. Look at it, it's black in color. And it basically is totally different because the outer coating over here is black and the outer coating is very slippery because it is made out of a material called methyl methylate, which is coated on top of a central coat. Now, this cannot be separated. We try to cut this out. What is going to happen is you cannot really separate it out. You can cut it, but you can't take it out. Can you see that? Now, this is a fundamental property to make it torqueable. So, what have they done? They have taken a central core on which they have actually dipped this wire inside this liquid, which was methyl methylate. Now, the problem is this methyl methylate by itself is not radio opaque. And the central core is a property of a wire which is made of a material called nitinol. Basically, niti is for nickel, T is for tantalum, it's a nickel titanium alloy. Basically, it was made by NASA. It was basically made for some work of theirs which became the most useful medical alloy ever possible. Why is it? Because look at this property. Whatever you do to this, it can never kink. Can you see this? I do something like this. I rotate it round. I make it like this. Okay. And it's back straight again. Now, this is an amazing property because this is what allows me to go into all kind of vessels and at the same time come out and re-enter a vessel and nothing happens. And because it is fused, it torques very easily. If I take any one of these termo wires, I can torque it. So if I want to do any super selective catheterization, it will be always an angled termo wire. Can you get it? Now let's have a look at the previous wires which I showed you. For example, we are going to take a wire like this. This is the amplar super stiff wire. I go through a very tortuous anatomy. It is like this. This is the end of the wire. The wire is gone. Whereas with a nitinol, that can never happen. Whatever you do, this wire cannot ever get kinked. So it's a zero kink wire. So nitinol's property is, it is a shape memory alloy. Basically, I give it a shape by heating it. And once this is cooled, it loses its shape completely. If I put this into zero degrees water and keep it for some time, it will become like thread. So it's basically a memory alloy because when it comes to the temperature of the body, it takes a shape. For example, in room temperature, it will be shaped. At subnormal temperature, it will not be having any shape. And so this coating or the core will also have some radiopaque material. Some people use tantalum. But basically, they have to make this wire into radiopaque. So the prob problem of titanol is it is not radiopaque. Now, so nitinol's property is used everywhere. Because of this absence of kink, we can make fine braidings of nitinol and incorporate it into a microcatheter and make the microcatheter kink resistant. So the prograde microcatheter, the Yashilon microcatheter, all these microcatheters basically have got braiding of nitinol to ensure it is kink resistant. The same property is used in all the stents today. Every self-expanding stent is made out of nitinol. So you have seen in many self-expanding stents, they'll have radio-opaque markers on the tip, proximally and distally, because otherwise radio opacity is very, very, very poor. Even for flow diverters in the brain, all of them, the vast majority is made of nitinol. But the radio opacity is poor. So they'll give markers at the tip. Except for one company, the Derivo, who started what is called the hollow tube nitinol wires. So the nitinol core wire is hollow. Inside that, they will put platinum strands to make it radio opaque. There's one company only that is manufacturing in Germany, and that is the parent company of the company that makes Derivo flow diverters, but they sell this to all other companies. 
So even today, newer companies are all coming with the same concept of using hollow fiber nitinol tubes to make it radio opaque, have a strand of strand of uh, platinum inside it. Can you get it? So it's very simple. I hope you can understand this. So nitinol is probably the most revolutionary product. The Amplutz plugs is made of nitinol. The IVC filters of like uh, uh, today that are available, some of them are made of nitinol. All the self tech panic stents are made of nitinol. Most of the flow diverters are made of nitinol. Can you get it? So, and also we find some of the retrieving device. All of this are based on the fact it doesn't kink. Imagine you make a plug of some other material. You put it, it'll kink. Completely lost. Imagine taking a stent and putting it across the joint. It'll get crushed. But since nitron cannot be crushed, as you move your joint, it will still retain itself. So this is a nitron. Remember, this is called the uh, angle thermo wire. Very useful for selective catheterization. But because of this property, it is also very useful for doing subintimal angioplasty. Because if I try to do subintimal angioplasty with a J wire, the shape will become like this and will completely go. So it cannot be pushed to open the intima, but rather it will just crumple and coil inside the subintimal place. But here, because of this, I can pull out the wire, go back in, pull out the wire. So remember, the only wires that are possible to use for doing subintimal angioplasty has to be a nitinol wire. Have you got it? Okay. Now, com coming to nitinol wires, they can also come straight or it can be angled. But there is one problem with this property. A nitinol wire's biggest problem is you cannot give it a shape. See, whatever I do, it looks straight. See, I can't give it a shape. So because of that, they make a wires called hybrid wires. The tip alone, they'll fuse it with platinum so you can get a tip or gold to give it a shape and the rest of it will be needed out. So hybrid wires have slowly come in the market because of everybody wants to give an angle. For example, we'll talk tomorrow about the neuro wires. The wire called the Traxxas is a hybrid wire. The distal tip is shapeable, but the rest of it is a nitinol core. Same way we got a hybrid were also from a company called BALT that we use for neuro intervention. The other wire which is made almost in the same property is this wire. This is called the Roadrunner wire. Again, same property. It is basically got outer coating. Remember, because it has got this outer coating, it can always has to be lubricated with water. So you, while taking this out, you have to flush it with water. You have to always have a wet gauze in your hand when you push it into the catheter. If you don't do these things, what is going to happen is that you will end up in this whole thing getting stuck inside the catheter. Have you understood clearly? So understand that. When you feel it, you can understand. This has got lubrication. Just feel a thermo wire with water. You'll see suddenly the property changes. It starts slipping. Can you understand? Huh? And you can feel it and you'll see that it slips. And because it slip, it's an advantage. It is easy to navigate the wire. It will easily slip over the endothelium of the vessel. So it's great. We've got all the properties you want. We got toggability. We got navigation capabilities because it is uh, slippery. The only problem is tip cannot be shaped and it may not be very stiff. So trying to make it stiff also, what companies like Thermo have done, they put a second mandal which is stiffer, and fuse the whole thing to make it one, okay? So again, to conclude, the second most important wire we use is the thermo wire or the glide wire for two reasons, for super selective catheterization and for doing subintimal angioplasty. Are you clear about that? So let's start again. The first access wire that goes through the needle is a J wire. It's a safety wire. It's got a stainless steel mandrel and it has got Teflon coating cannot be togged. One use, initial access. Second use, if you want to go through a vessel and avoid the branches, you can use it, right? These also can be used in, vari in different stiffness for us to do exchange maneuvers. So I can use a super stiff amplatch wire and the super stiff amplatch wire allows me to do an exchange through a tortuous anatomy and classical places are exchanging into the carotid exchanging into the distal brachial, exchanging into the uh, opposite femoral in a crossover maneuver. 
when i'm working on the renal artery you can use a wire called the rosen wire which has got intermediate stiffness when you want to put a stent graft you use the lundquist wire which is the most stiff the same extra stiff wire can also be used in biliary interventions the second thing comes that i need wires that can tog so i use ditinol wires and the best wires is the glide wire although these are excellent for togging excellent for taking a catheters across remember it's also the best wire that can be used for subintimal angioplasty you can use a straight wire to cross stenosis it also can penetrate through a, a occlusion because of the property of not kinking at the same time an angled wire will form a loop and is the best wire for doing subintimal angioplasty all the wires that talk so far are basically got a diameter of 035 inches 0.035 inches other and which is the standard wire used for both diagnostic catheters and most of the balloons the next set of wires that we will be talking about will be the 018 wires the 014 wires and the 0 uh, 08 0.08 wires which are used for neuro intervention and those are basically wires that we we'll use either with micro catheter or with balloons which we use below the knee joint okay so uh, this is a bit of an overview of wires and the property another thing i want to say the core of a wire if you see in this case was round when i cut it so some people have also realized if you make it flat even then and you wind a, a material on it it can torn because the outer core will not slip so sometimes what people do is when they make a hybrid wire they'll keep the distal part of it flat and then they will put a coating on it giving us better torque some people will keep the core as a cube or a square all these are basic techniques different companies will use to change the property also remember current wires are not one wire but a fusion of multiple wires the distal mode will be soft the mid will be intermediate and the proximal will be very hard so you have to try your wires and try to see what you want in the periphery these are the wires we use most of the time in the 35 it's a j wire a, a ampla extensive wire a rosen wire the lundquist wire the termo angled and the straight wires and sometimes we also use the road runner wire okay so thank you for this sir